Watch this. And I just want everyone in this room to know that I approach this with nothing but feelings of love and care and concern for everyone in this room. Well, there were a lot of people in that room and outside of it that have something to say about that and the bill that would make transgender surgery for minors illegal. It's such a long and grueling process for the legal paperwork and the medical procedures and even just the emotional impact. You know, no one's gonna go through all of that trouble just so that they can sneak into the women's locker room. In their own words, we sat down with a transgender teenager who says bills like these show intolerance and ignorance. ITD says they're too vulgar for Idaho's roads. Rejected license plates. They say a lot of stuff we can't say on TV. But maybe we can show you some of these bumper stumpers. 18 pages of names. That's how many people have signed up and are still waiting to testify on House Bill 465. That's the one that would make it a crime for anyone in Idaho to perform gender reconstructive surgery on anyone under the age of 18. That hearing still going on right now. And Joe Paris was there when that meeting began at 1.30 this afternoon. He's back with us now. And Joe, what's being heard right now in the uh, House Judiciary Committee room? Well, right now I can tell you, Brian, we're actually watching on my phone uh, until just a minute ago. People are testifying in favor or against that bill that we just described. Again, the committee started at 1.30. There were several different items they had to go through. Some involved marriage certificates, others involved prostitution and how that should be seen under the law. Finally, the last item on the agenda today was this House Bill 465. And again, as Brian mentioned, in part, it would make those gender reassignment surgeries for minors illegal. And because of that, there was a lot of people that showed up at the State House to speak out against that. And that will give you a little bit of a look at what's going on in the committee this afternoon. Again, though, still going on as we speak. And this is actually, you can see uh, in, inside the committee at the State House right now. This is EW42. It's one of those times where the uh, public is invited to come in and weigh in. And actually, if you didn't know this, you can stream a lot of these at home. Not all of them do the video and the audio. This one has the video and audio. Sometimes it's just audio, but it's been this scene for hours and people waiting their turn. Again, it's five o'clock now. We've been talking about it here for a few hours, and now we'll give you a look at what the beginning of that conversation was looking like uh, a short time ago. I just want everyone in this room to know that I approach this with nothing but feelings of love and care and concern for everyone in this room. Representative Christy Zitto introduced a bill a short time ago that would prohibit performing gender reassignment surgery on anyone under 18. Critics say this is an attack on transgender rights, but Representative Zitto says... The goal here is to protect those who are under 18 from these procedures that are life-altering and health-threatening. Representative Melissa Wintrow will eventually get to vote on the bill in committee. Today, though, she heard concerns from the community as well as support for the bill. As a physician, I have a great respect for the human body and the need to, to prevent in children changes that are permanent that they perhaps don't fully understand what they're doing. That this is an infringement on freedom and it's an absolute overreach by government. So my colleagues who want to have a light touch on government are far overreaching into my own identity and who I want to be. During the hearing, Representative Zitto said that gender dysphoria is a mental disorder and it should be treated as such. If it's a mental disorder as listed in the Diagnostics and Statistics Manual, then it should be treated as a mental disorder and not as a physical disorder. Representative Wintrow disagrees. Everybody deserves the opportunity in this United States of America and Idaho to be who they want to be and have the opportunity to succeed. As we told you, uh, public testimony is still going on right now, so it's likely that they will not vote on this today. I can tell you now that they won't vote on this, but they should bring this up in committee soon. Brian, again, we showed a few different rooms during that story, and that's actually because those were overflow, overflow rooms. Yeah. That first room got packed up so quickly, way before 1.30, so the Capitol staffers, they had to open up at least two or three other rooms, which were also packed, so people could just watch on projectors and then take their turn walking over to the main room and testifying. And they're limiting testimony right now to just just two minutes a person. Yep. Right, we'll keep tabs on it. Thanks, Joe. Well, number two on the transgender agenda, the Fairness in Women's Sports Act. That was supposed to be heard on the House floor again today for its third reading, but Idaho's Assistant Chief Deputy Attorney General thought something else should be read instead, like his opinion on House Bill 500's 
constitutionality, and it wasn't a favorable one. Senate Minority Leader Atlanta Rebell asked for an analysis, and Assistant Chief Deputy Brian Kane answered that this morning. And he said, quote, requiring gender identification for some, but not all, is constitutionally problematic, and the factors that are mandated to establish a student's sex raise concerns. He also said it's unclear whether the state's interest in ensuring fair competition justify the intrusion of privacy. The provision in the draft legislation regarding how a student's sex may be established is likely vulnerable to a court challenge. Vulnerable, it's an interesting choice of words. In his opinion, Kane raised more questions than answers, like are there even enough transgender girls who want to play sports that it would displace girls to a substantial extent? Would transgender girls have a meaningful opportunity to play on men's or even co-ed teams? And given that there are co-ed teams, is separation by sex absolutely necessary? Kane says more research is needed to make those determinations. And again, that bill supposed to be heard for its third reading this morning, which would likely have prompted a vote. But that hearing been pushed back to tomorrow. So all that being said, there's still another transgender bill still in the state house that has to do with being able to change stats on a birth certificate after a year of birth. One of those stats is gender, and if the House Bill 509 becomes a law, transgender people would not be able to change the gender on their birth certificate ever. So born a girl, but realize you are at your core a boy and go through the lengthy process and expensive surgery and hormone treatments to fulfill your identity. But your actual ID will still, by law, have to say you are a girl. As you can imagine, Republican Representative Julianne Young's Vital Statistics Act doesn't sit too well with Idaho's transgender community. And how do we know this? Well, we sat down with 16-year-old Jasper Ryan and we asked him. Hey, tomatoes, red wine. Babies. Jasper Ryan and his mom, red Anita. And how many carrots? Know how this works. One fourth cup. When you follow a recipe, you can, at least kind of, expect how it's going to turn out. Outside of a kitchen, though. I do need a little bit of salt and pepper, though. The process doesn't always produce what's planned. Oh, hello. Until about two years ago, Jasper was known as Shayna. Jasper was always a daddy's girl, right? So wanted to do everything daddy did. So when did you think to yourself, OK, I'm not like every other girl that I know? I think the realization didn't come until about middle school, but I definitely started having those thoughts a lot earlier on. But, you know, there was no way for me to put words to it. I was just kind of like, I think every girl secretly wants to be a boy. You know, I kind of normalized it for myself and moved on. But it wasn't until I was in like seventh grade and I had a transgender friend. I was like, uh oh, you could do that? That's crazy. Like, I might want to think about that a little bit. And I feel like for me, the biggest realization, I quite literally made a checklist of what I thought made someone a boy, like every single possible step. And it wasn't until I checked off every single thing on there that I wanted to be that I realized. It wasn't going to be that simple. Jasper had no idea how a little girl raised in a very conservative LDS family would tell their family she wasn't who they thought she was. So Jasper decided at 13, suicide was a better option. Yeah. The scariest part too was um, not knowing, not knowing if he was going to, be okay mentally. I didn't know he was in that deep of a, a place where he would um, think about taking his own life. And, and so, you know, as mom, I just, we started having really deep conversations. Those conversations finally led to a family meeting a few years later. And I just broke down crying in the middle of telling them. Like I had all my bags packed upstairs ready for them to tell me that I needed to get out of the house because that's just how afraid I was. Which to me, as a parent, I can't even imagine, I can't even fathom doing that to your child, to kick him out, to shut him out of your life because of a lifestyle change. What is it? It's not hurting me. He's not hurting anybody. He is an amazing kid. These days, at the age of 16, Jasper is working on getting his driver's license. And passing the tests can be challenging enough, but there's a bill in Idaho's legislature that will make the whole process even tougher for Jasper. What do you think about the lawmakers trying to, to prevent you from changing your gender on your birth certificate? Yeah, I think they don't understand what it's like. And I don't think they've really been close with someone who is transgender and really had to relate to them and understand what they're going through. Because I think if they did understand that, then this bill wouldn't exist. You know, it wouldn't be currently trying to be passed because they would understand what a huge part of our identity it is. 
His mom was one of those who didn't always understand it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was one of those people. You know, I mean, um, a year and a half ago before this happened, I would have been fully in support of some of these bills. Absolutely. I would be like, oh, yeah, heck, yeah, this is stupid. You know, change your gender. You can change your gender. You're born with what you're, you know, you're born as what you are. You, you can't change your, your gender or whatever. Who are they hurting, right? It's funny how that works. It, they're not hurting anybody. So if you could talk to lawmakers, what would you tell them? I think I would probably just tell them the basics of my story and what's happened to me and, you know, just kind of like show them that like, we're people too, and this is a part of our human rights and the kind of things that we need to get by on a daily basis. If my birth certificate says female on it, and or my driver's license says female on it, and I've been on testosterone for five years and I have a full beard, you know, that's going to be impacting different scenarios in my day-to-day -day life. We've got to wake up, you know, and realize that not everybody is like you. Jasper has started a chapter of the Gay Straight Alliance at his high school, of which he says there are now 10 members. Jasper also told us he isn't a candidate for surgery or even hormone treatment right now. That's a family decision. His mom's a nurse and isn't too keen on what hormones might do to a young body. But they both see these bills, all three of them, they said, as discriminatory towards transgender people. I have reached out several times to Representative Julianne Young to ask her about this bill. She's yet to respond, but the invitation remains open. And my first question would be, why is a bill like this necessary? We live in a state where the governor touts his anti-regulation policies, where if you want to walk around with a loaded AR-15 rifle, go ahead. We allow caregivers to come into our homes and we don't require them to have a license or even be certified. But we're okay with putting in personal restrictions on what someone can do or say with their own body. Our Pledge of Allegiance, still recited in Idaho schools, ends with the phrase, with liberty and justice for all. Do any of these bills fulfill that pledge? Just the question I have. There's a reminder though, if you or someone you know needs help because suicide rates among transgender youth is very, very high, we ask that you reach out, please, to the Idaho Suicide Hotline. And that number is 208-398-4357. All calls are anonymous and confidential. Idaho's property taxes, red hot right now, but a proposed rate freeze for homeowners has made its way across the rotunda, one step closer to reality. What does it take to get your vanity license plate rejected from the Idaho Transportation Department? Turns out, not much. Our criteria is a little more lax. We want to hear what you have to say. Have you joined our 208 Facebook group yet? How about follow us on Twitter? Text 208 to 208-321-5614. We'll send you links to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Basically, it's a one-stop shop for everything related to the 208.
There are issues sometimes that require all of us to give and take a little bit, and this is one of those. But if we don't find a solution soon, we are driving people that have lived in Idaho their whole lives and through no actions of their own are being forced out of their homes. Well, after a long and animated debate, a bill granting a one year property tax freeze to Idaho homeowners has passes another hurdle this morning. House voted 46 to 23 to send Representative Mike Moyle's bill to the Senate. Majority leader's bill would, in essence, not allow an increase in the property tax portion of local government budgets for one year. You're still going to have to pay property tax this year, but it will be at the same rate as it was last year. And this bill has been widely criticized and opposed by some city leaders like Nampa Mayor Debbie Kling and state representatives like John Gannon. It's time to face the real issue. And the real issue is that the property tax system has morphed into an unjust and unfair system that no longer works. And when our property taxes are going up in double digits every year for three years in a row, it's not working. Again, it did pass the full house, now heads to the Senate. Representative Moyle says he hopes this whole year that they take it off if it goes through and gets all the way to the governor's desk. We'll give them a chance to kind of talk about property tax in a more in-depth discussion. Well, you can catch our previous interviews with both Nampa Mayor Debbie Kling and Representative Mike Moyle. They are there right now at KTVB.com and on our 208 Facebook group. Current temperatures really similar to where we were this time yesterday, but it may feel warmer to you because we have less cloud cover and also lighter wind as well. Up in our mountain locations, close to 30 degrees, 33 in Stanley right now. Calm winds through the Treasure Valley, not even a whisper of wind really. It's down through the Magic Valley, maybe a touch breezy in the Twin Falls area, but much less wind than what we had yesterday. Now clear skies are with us at this hour. High pressure has been in control today, but we do have a very weak system off to our northwest. It'll pass by mainly to our northern zones, but it will bring partly cloudy skies to the valley locations for the day tomorrow and maybe even a few light snow showers to our mountain locations. So here we time it all out with future cast overnight tonight. Partly cloudy skies building in for us that should keep our mountain locations from falling below zero into early tomorrow morning as we have seen the last several mornings. So really more single digits for the morning hours in Stanley and perhaps even a quick snow shower waking up tomorrow morning in the mountain locations. If you see the snow showers tomorrow, though, won't last long, won't amount to too much, maybe just a dusting in some locations. And for the Treasure Valley, we stay dry and again, partly cloudy skies with a touch of warming into tomorrow afternoon as well. A little closer to 50 degrees rather than the mid 40s of today. Tonight, 22 to 28 for our overnight lows in the Treasure Valley tomorrow, 48 to 53. And this kicks off the warming trend that we have in store for us. Here is some of those numbers to expect for tomorrow afternoon. And then this ridge amplifies just a little bit and it also slides inland, which puts us in a mild bubble of air for the end of the week. Friday's highs looking fancy and very spring like right around 60 degrees for most of our valley locations and into the mid 40s for our mountain locations. Here's a look at the seven day forecast. That's when the warmth peaks on Friday, wrapping up February on a mild note. More cloud cover expected for the weekend. For a fresh forecast any time of the day, visit KTVB.com. Like then Senator Barack Obama before him, he's an underdog for the Democratic presidential nomination. And like Obama, Mayor Pete Buttigieg is coming to Boise. I hate you all, but there's a lot of other stuff we can't say on TV. ITD rejected nearly 200 vanity license plates. We've got the list. Do you have something to say and would like a little more than seven letters to do so? Say it in the text. 208-321-5614. We'll read some of your comments coming up at the end of the show.
Boise Mayor Lauren McLean's pick to become the next president of the United States, Pete Buttigieg, he's headed to Boise. The former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, which has a population of just over 100,000, will be the first presidential candidate to make a stop in Boise on March 7th, just three days before Idaho's presidential primary on March 10th. Buttigieg is one of eight Democrats still vying for the nomination, and details of his visit have not yet been released, but the Idaho Democratic Party says he will serve as the keynote speaker at the Frank and Bethine Church Gala that's happening at the Boise Center that night. Tickets for that event start at $100. You may remember former presidential candidate Julian Castro did come to Boise last February, but he has since dropped out of the race. Just a reminder, early voting underway in both Ada and Canyon counties. For a list of what's on your ballot, just text VOTE to 208-321-5600. One four that will get you straight to our voter guide and it'll get it sent straight to your phone. It's also worth pointing out when then Senator Barack Obama showed up to Boise, he was the underdog on the Democratic ticket. Maybe it was enough to kind of push him over the edge. I don't know. When we come back, we're going to take a look at what license plates ITD say were too vulgar to be on the road and probably too vulgar to be on TV. We got a long list to share with you, though. We mentioned this yesterday. Idaho has about 70 options when it comes to specialty license plates. But what about those that aren't necessary specialty, but more vanity? There are a lot out there. It's a pretty clever ones, too. And those are just the ones that made the cut. There were a lot more that didn't more than 180. So we asked the Idaho Transportation Department which plates were rejected last year and why we thought it'd be fun to share them with you. The 2019 total fewer than the year before, by the way, as for why? ITD says most were rejected because they didn't follow one simple administrative rule. Be tasteful. License plates cannot contain foul language or innuendos, but that didn't stop about 181 people from trying. Most of them too inappropriate to put on the air, so we grabbed the least offensive ones like this one here. Dumb dog. Not sure why that one was rejected. I'm uh, not sure why. I don't hate you all. That could probably have passed, but maybe they just didn't like the hate part because again, Idaho too great for hate, right? This one, mob guy, did
didn't make the cut. I guess didn't like the mafia reference. Neither did his wife. Mob wife did not make the cut. Pimp Daddy, not also also not out there on Idaho's roads because of what of last year's decision. This one I think could have belonged to a plumber, so maybe it would have worked. The poo pros, maybe? I don't know. I think that'd have been a clever one. I don't know that I even want to touch this one, but this is one that was also rejected by ITD. And if you'd like to check out the entire rejected list, just head over to the 208 Facebook page to see the complete list. But I must warn you, if you don't want to risk being offended, do not use Urban Dictionary to find out what some of these mean. I mean, you're going to have to, but I warn you not to. We'll be right back. All right, as we wrap up the 208, we're going to take a look at some of your comments. I was raised in Idaho East. For me, being a Westerner meant a sort of libertarian belief in self-determination and live and let live. The anti-transgender legislation being proposed goes against this belief. What is going on here? Great note. Brian, at a time of, div uh, at a time of divisiveness, the legislature continues to drive in that wedge. These proposals are nothing but disgusting. Thanks for the story. Just some of the comments you guys have sent in. Bills that negatively affect those in the transgender community are sadly born of either hate or ignorance. Luckily, stories like these help see transgender people as who they are. People. Thank you, Jacob, for sending that in. Birth certificate means exactly what it says. Birth. It is what you are and what you were at the time of your first took your first breath outside of your mother's womb, but it does not mean who you are now, Jay. But sadly, people who are in the transgender community want it to match the identification they carry around with them. And if this bill passes, they won't have that possibility. You have to be 18 to purchase a rifle, 18 to be in a possession of a handgun. You have to be 21 to buy tobacco. Why can't you wait until you're 18 to make a life altering decision to change your gender? Dan and Melba, sometimes they do like Jasper. He's not doing that right now. He's going to wait until he turns 18, but he's going to go for it and he's going to make that transition. Why not give people the choice? Mm -hmm. 